Yeah, that's right. Um, Isabel. Isabel is from North Queensland, and I will let Isabel do her own talking um, about what they're doing and uh, in up there in uh, their nation. And um, but before we do, we do the acknowledgement of the country and that um, we acknowledge the, um, the traditional owners and their elders, past and present, and of course their future generations. And that uh, we wish everybody well. And in the proceedings today, <coughs> um, we're going to listen some some testimonies from people who need to tell their stories about what's going on in their places, so we all get to know what's going on in different parts of Australia. We're going to do that up until we have a, a, a morning tea break. We've got a couple of international an international guest who's uh, Mapuche, Mapuche, and uh, they uh, we're going to invite them to uh, give a talk after the morning tea. And um, so we'll um, start the process. Um, we have a translator, which is good, um, and he'll be able to translate everything for us uh, in the presentation. So um, without further ado, I will ask Isabel Anderson, oh, and the translator, of course he's got a translator. No relation. Um, and uh, Isabel is no relation, but, we, <laughs> yeah. um, but they trouble some tribe down there on Queensland water, though. Nah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, right up. I'll just, Thank you. So good morning everyone. So I come from far north Queensland and we have a native title. Queensland has more native title than any other state in Australia and after Queensland of course is the Northern Territory. We have some really bad battles up there with the Queensland government because they just really don't want us to have any control over the land. Um, especially with the Department of Natural Resources. You <coughs> hold all the <coughs> tenure system or the tiles to the land. <clears throat> so where I come from, there we have there's three neighbouring groups who have native titles, so we've joined together, we call ourselves Tri-Nations. <clears throat> the reason we did that is if any of you have native title, you'll understand that with native title you have to have a prescribed body corporate, a PBC. So we have three PBCs. And by law, the PBCs have to be registered to ORIC, the Office of the Register of Indigenous Corporations, but they have to be registered as non-for-profit organisations, and if you do happen to get um, a big royalty pack from a mining company, um, basically you can't use that money. They stick it into a future fund and you'll never see it. And the land council in your area is in our case, it's the North Queensland Land Council. They can dip into that money and use it <coughs> for administrative purposes. So what we did was, with some consultation with Michael, we 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 are registered with ORIC, but we also under Tri Nations set up another set up Tri Nations as a corporation under ASIC, the Australian Securities Investment Commission. So we did that. Um, we went by ourselves a public liability of $20 million. We registered for an ABN and we thought, fuck the government, they're not going to keep us under the thumb anymore. <laughs> we'll stay under the, you know, we'll, we'll abide by their law, but we're going to be brave and go out and try something different. So we've done it. And then we went down to state and Commonwealth government departments, as in Centrally. Um, when you're registered with Sally and you have to go and do your little 15 hours or 20 hours, whatever a week, work for the dog, then you're registered to a job classroom agency. So I went and saw them and we said, we've got our own public liability, we've got money, we want to start a community project, we've got native title, we want to start community projects, but we want to control it, we don't want you guys to control it, but you have all set administrative systems to set up, so let's work out partnerships with you guys, you become stakeholders with us. And they agreed, I, I didn't think it was going to be so easy, I thought there'd be a bit of resistance. And I said, yeah, that's great. And I said, you get your funding from the Department of Employment and the Department of Education and Training. Um, that's all that, that we were worried about, really, was that kept on getting the funding from the Commonwealth. We said, we're not taking that away from you. We just want to run community programs. We control it. We get accredited training, not bullshit training, but accredited training as a, a Cert three and Diploma, which leads on to a university degree. They thought it was marvellous. We didn't realise that we were the only ones in Australia doing this. No one else had done it. We were like breaking new ground. I thought, shit. Anyway, they were on our side and they said, 
get your group together, get your elves together and come and meet with us, come and meet with our managers, the Sunlink manager and all these uh, managers of job place and agencies. That was easy. Um, went down to the council. Uh, we told the council what we wanted to do. Where our native title is, the council zoning is rural. Um, so it's not hard to even do anything really, went and saw the council. <laughs> And um, they said, just put your draft application in. That, I mean, it was so easy. Then I thought, why aren't our leaders telling our people how easy this is to do? Our people are strung out, wringing their fingers, thinking everything's too hard. And then you've got these white government administrators controlling everything and telling them what to do. And they can do this themselves. It's not so hard. So we've done it. We've linked in with Tracy Cooper because we want to do sustainable community projects back on country. We've got all the land. We've got it all back under native title. Um, it's all zoned, all of it's just about zoned rural. Um, we've got unused state land. The government is trying to force us to transfer some of that land into leasehold through an Illua. We're resisting what they've given us the Illua twice. We've sent, sent it back twice. And um, every time they send us the illegal, we look through it, we pick it out, pick, pick through it, no, we don't agree with that, no, 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 um, no, that's going to impact on our native title rights and interests, no, that, that could possibly extinguish our native title rights and interests in the future, no, 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 send it back, take it back to your lawyers, redraft it, give us a new draft, and that's what they do. Um, otherwise, we're not going to agree to any transfer of the land over to a leasehold. Actually, we don't want to have the land transferred to leasehold. Um, but anyway, let's just play, play the game that um, we need to play to keep sending it back. In the end, they'll get sick of um, um, using so much money um, to just get one Ilua passed through. Uh, the Ilua was for a white grazier called Mr Perks. Um, he just wants to graze cattle. He wants permanent tenure to build a house because it's rural, so he can't build a house in Homestead. If he gets leasehold, then he can build a house and he can have more cattle and do some more infrastructure, more fences, more dams and stuff like that. We don't want to get rid of Mr Perks. We want Mr Perks to stay, but we do not want to give him permanent tenure and then we get no compensation. Now, if he was looking, the Queensland government can't give him permanent tenure, only we can because we're the native title people. If the Queensland government were to give him permanent tenure, they would charge an arm and leg for him to be there. So we said, fuck you, it's our land. If you want permanent tenure from us, you need to pay compensation. So what we, our intention uh, is to do the backwards and forwards, cat and mouse game with the Illy one, then in the end, when he gets sick of paying the lawyers, we're gonna say, give us your draft Illy one, we'll look at it, we'll amend it for you, we'll write our own policy into that Illy one, because right now the government's write the policy and the lawyers write the policy to the viewers. See how they don't care about us? So we said, we will write the policies into the viewer, give it to them, then when he accepts it, we'll come down, we'll give you some permanent tenure, now pay us some money. We don't want to kick people off the land, we want people to stay and we want people to prosper, but we want our fair share, we want our money. Why does the government stop us from benefiting economically? Those days are over for us in far north Queensland. So that's our story. And we do want people to stay on the land, non-Indigenous people, white people, whoever, but we want them. Every state has a climate change action plan. And we want them to abide by the climate change action plans. We're not climate change deniers like One Nation, Pauline Hanson, all those nut cases. We realise it is true because we live on the land, we see the changes. And we want people, non-Indigenous people, white, whatever, ethnic, to come and use the land, benefit economically from the land, but they have to abide by those climate change action plan guidelines and not interfere with our native title rights and interests. Otherwise, come and stay, do whatever you want to do, obey the laws, pay us our compensation. Everyone can benefit. And that's our story. We work with Tracy to do sustainable projects, to revegetate where we are, there's old mining land, um, the mines have gone, there's open shafts, um, old grazing, the land has been um, degraded. So through sustainable community projects, we want to revegetate and fix the land up. We started already on an old mining site, we've revegetated, and guess what? It works. It works. 
You can do this if you put your mind together. What we've done is, in Australia, if you've got native title, the system for getting funding is through the state and through through the state, it's through the Community Grants Program, the Commonwealth, it's through the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet. There's hundreds of millions of dollars just sitting there, and the only way that you can access that money is through a native title PPC. Some of the groups up where I come from get tons of money, millions, tens of millions of dollars, but they work with the sustainability units of the universities. We call the universities of Australia the new mission managers. Every single university in Australia has an agreement with the native title PBC in Queensland and the Northern Territory. So that's what we call the new mission managers. These sustainability and biodiversity units in the universities get the funding through the native title PBC. They control the funding. They pay themselves big wages. They then they get their masters and their PhDs, and the Aboriginals do training. Some of it is accredited training through the Rangers programs, a lot of it's not accredited. Our people are getting robbed again. That's why we said we won't go down that line. We don't need the sustainability units in the universities. We've got people like Tracy who are into, have their own company, uh, who are into sustainability. So um, we work with the people outside of the universities to get our programs up and running, to get our funding, and it, and it works. So we just need to think outside the square box, and it works. And that basically, that's our story out in Barnwell, Queensland. How many people can talk about this story? 20,000. Yes, 20,000, yeah. Huge, huge numbers of people. And the council are quite happy for us to do this, because the towns are dying where I come from. The, the old townships are dying, because mining's gone. And they're dying, and the youth are leaving. And the youth are going to the big cities and never coming back. And, and the old people, the people my age, we're, we're flabbergasted that the kids aren't coming back, the, the non-Indigenous kids. And no matter what they do, tourism, they try everything and it's, it's not working. So the last hope is us, the black folks, because we own the land. And we <laughs> are saying to them, we're not taking all the land away from you for, for you not to use. We want you to use the land, but just remember it's our land you start paying us for using our land. And hopefully, some of the youth will see it's a good thing and, and stay. I mean, we want them to go and get educated and come back. We want them to stay on the land and work the land and economically develop the land. There's tons of land up where we come from. Um, it's, it's the thinking, though. Um, the media have done a really good job in making non-Indigenous people think that we're getting all the land and we don't know what we're doing. We're all uneducated black fellows. Um, we're just going to take the land and waste it, basically, not understand what we're doing, not how to develop it. But we're proving to them up there it doesn't have to be like that. We can economically develop the land for ourselves, for non-Indigenous people, for whoever, anyone. Yes? Uh, you said earlier uh, about uh, raising money from the into a farm. But you can't use it, and the uh, government can use it under administration. Why can't we have someone here from the government saying what rights have they got to take the money that we're raising for our benefits, for our education, for future youth generation? Yet, yeah, but they can grab it any time they want and exactly use it. Right. Because you've got Indigenous people that sit on the Prime Minister's Advisory Council, Mr. Warren Monday, who don't give a shit. They know this. They don't give a shit. They're not sticking up for us. What happened was Oric. When Tom Calmer was the Human Rights Commissioner, he went down to Parliament here, Commonwealth Parliament, and he did a Memorandum of Understanding, or did a Memorandum of Understanding with ASIC, the Australian Securities Investment Commission, and that's why we have to operate as non-for-profit organisations registered through the Commonwealth Government. So they control everything. Well, that's, they don't want, they, they want us to be under the thumb, always down. They don't want us, to, I mean, you can get a billion dollars from a mining company, you can't touch it. You won't be able to touch it for 100 years. That's just how it works. Dilly. Our people have to get smart and think they're outside the square box. What up, Dilly? Wouldn't you? We get nothing working. All right, ask her, just really out. When, when um, you're looking at these yellowers, yes. the ones we looked up, like your ones, but yes. the yellow ones, 
they've got a surrender area. Yes, You're surrendering yes. your yes. land to the council. And yes. I, I couldn't believe what I was reading. So you have to surrender areas to the council. But have you been able to get to that? To no. Have you been able to get that out of the Mullawa? No. So you're surrendering your land with a piece of paper? Because, because they've got the power poles up, the electricity poles. Telstra wants to do the underground cables. Um, we actually don't want power poles. We don't want the electricity. We want, we want to use sustainable techniques and technologies. We want to use solar. We want to use anything but theirs. The same, the same thing as with the, um, with the rural landowners looking to, to, to transfer it over to leasehold so they can build a property and, and a have house. A, a possible... Under um, rural zoning, they can't build a house. Yeah. Can, you, can you do the same with the, with, um, with the government in, in terms of the, the power poles with Telstra, um, private, private um, or the public reserves? Um, we do have public reserves. Land. Yeah, but can you, can you negotiate through your, through your yes. insula yes, you about co uh, council and yes. Telstra paying compensation to you guys for the use of... The power poles on country. And they won't the, compensate us. So, so you, what we have to do them, is they won't compensate us. With them? So that's what we're saying. We won't use their electricity poles. If I had a chainsaw and I could cut them all down, I would. So what we're saying to everybody up there, don't use their electricity. Go sustainable. Start using the alternative energy energy and the alternative techniques and technologies. And that's what we want people to do. Which strategy may be for you then to look at solar panels? Yes, yes, that's what we are. Building the own, building the own yes. grid. Yes. 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 And we're looking at alternative energy for cars. We're looking. We're looking at alternative energy sources right across the board, and it'll be cheap for our people could probably live on country and not pay anything basically, and uh, they'll have a whole lot more money in their pockets. And in saying that, we also want non-indigenous people to come and use the land and benefit economically. But we want them to use the technologies and the new tech, the techniques that go with those technologies, because they're going to be better off, and the environment's going to be better off, and we'll all be better off economically anyway. That's right. So we're going to force them to do that. They can't force you to sign an early one. Just keep sending it back when they give you a new one. We pick through it. Um, we find the faults in it, and with native title, you have. Native title rights and interests to the land, and those native title rights and interests are protected by the Racial Discrimination Act of Commonwealth. What it means is no one can come and prejudice against you and your native title rights and interests, and we always use that one. We always say, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, what do you want to do? That could impact on our native title rights and interests, and that far go away. We're not going to let anything impact on our native. If it is going to impact on our native title rights and interests, it has to be extremely zero to minimal. Otherwise, nothing will get past us. And definitely for sure we are not going to let our native title rights and interests be extinguished by any activity on the land. So, and that's our right of the name, uh, the Racial Discrimination Act, come on, it protects us. People, they're not, the lawyers are not telling our people this. They're not telling our people anything. Especially the native title. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's. They're riding the gravy train of the black fella. The universities are riding the gravy train. They get millions, millions of the universities. And the lawyers, they are riding the gravy train of the Indigenous people. But we've got to get smart and think outside of the square box. So basically, that's what we're doing up there. And we're having success. And um, wherever we're going, we're not getting turned away. People actually want to work with us. The council wants to work with us. They, they, they all want to work with us. The state government departments like DAF, which is the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, the new guide Environment, Health, Safety, they want to work with us because they can see that we can think outside of the square box. Have you thought about uh, <coughs> going down the route of um, establishing a mine? A mine. A mine, yes, that's what we want to do. Yes. And you can roll it out anywhere across yeah, Australia where there's no title. Therefore, you're basically combating the, 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 the solicitors. Yeah. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Richard. Yes. yes. Can we use the mic so that we can hear what's going on here? Yes. We're over here, not listening. Yeah. Can't understand what's going on. Right. Um, and what do you, your comments need to be recorded as well? So yeah. anybody else outside of here, try to get hold of you. Um, try to get um, to understand what's going on. Um, we won't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. 
There's a lady from London who's uh, going to Skype in and address us on reparations and explain what reparations is. Um, so, because this so is, far, no this one has been able to get important. reparations from the EPUs. The Native Title Act says that we can get compensation. No one in Australia, no Native Title Group has been able to do it. We hope to be the first group. We're not giving up. I don't care what they throw at us. We're just going to keep fighting them back and fighting them back. They have to pay us for the use of our land and for the past uses of our land. They have to pay us. Um, the Queensland Government, they're probably the worst in the whole of Australia. They really come at us. Like, we just unite and we stick together and we just stand up against them. Up the back then. Okay. Um, you see, it, it, that's still searching. Um, just to sort of um, go back on that, I've well, known to the first native title meeting. I haven't signed up to no native title business at all because what was stated inside that paper was that you are signing up to extinguish lands. And I said to my mom, where is the paper that extinguished that land? Where is the agreement between our elders and this system to take over our country? If there isn't, I'm walking out. Yeah. And I've never walked back into a native title meeting because I knew that it was all a sham. Yes. So what they've it done is, has yes. deceived our mob. Yes. So that's why I keep going back and go back, going back to saying, rebuild the elders' council. Yes. Re-establish our Elders' Council, the we, men and we, women's groups. We, 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 we re-established the Elders' Advisory Council and we gave power back to the Elders. Yeah, is that separate from the Native Title Party? Yes. It is. They are Native Title Elders and Claimants, but we've set them up over here under ASIC, the Australian Securities Investment Commission, but they can still be a part of the Native Title over here as the PBC, as members and directors, but we've given them I reckon the Commonwealth Government doesn't give them power, but over here we've re-established and confirmed and given them their power. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're actually giving them their power. Yes. If we sign up and we give them our signatures, we are giving them the power to do whatever they like in our country and we need to stop this. We need to start be making agreements amongst each other the way that the ancestors had. That's what we did with the tribal nations, yeah. And it was easy for us because the way the marriages it's like the domino effect, so the people from it, the women from Nbaru would come and marry down into my children's tribe, Najan, and all the women from Najan would marry all the men down in Dingy. So it was like a domino effect, so we're all related by blood, we're all related through marriage, and we're all related tribally. So it was really easy for us to do it, and it works perfectly, it works perfectly so that, that trust and that loyalty is embedded in everybody anyway.